I'm about to head into the wilderness where I'll be alone for seven days. I'm bringing no food, no water, and 10 tools to help me survive. Tool number one, an ax. Tool number two, a magnesium rod. Tool number three, a pot, a sleeping bag, a hammock, and a tarp. For every other survival need that those six tools can't give me, I will be making survival tools using this 3D printer. I'll also be bringing my laptop so I can design survival tools to 3D print. And to power these devices, as well as all of my camera gear, I'm bringing an Anchor Solix C1000 portable power station and a 200 watt folding solar panel. And finally, I'm transporting all of this gear into the woods with tool number 10, a wheelbarrow. I am so excited to begin this challenge and discover how 3D printing can help in a survival situation. And I think here in Los Padres National Forest on the central coast of California is the perfect place to carry out this challenge. I am honestly in love with this landscape and as much as it's a beautiful sunny day right now, the weather here changes fast. We're at 1500 feet of elevation, rain can come in at any time, it gets cold at night, so we got a long walk ahead of us. Let's take advantage of this daylight find a campsite. All right, don't dump the 3D printer into the stream. Oh boy, glad I wore waterproof boots. Oh my God. <laughs> so I didn't really plan filming much of this section, just getting out of the, you know, National Forest Service road areas and into the more primitive wilderness, but these washed out roads are very difficult to navigate with the 3D printer. We have one more big stream crossing and then I think we're in the clear, but I'm expending a lot of calories and we're not even in the woods yet. And I have no water, no clean water anyway. There's lots of water around me. Even though it is kind of a primitive tool, a wheelbarrow does have a nice high clearance. So, you know, you can ford small streams like that pretty easily. All right, I think we're out of the worst parts. I feel like Bilbo Baggins, like, I'm going on an adventure. So if you're from the East Coast like me, you might think that that's man-made lawn, but this is natural meadow. It is so beautiful, like, you have these big old coastal oak trees growing right in the middle. It kind of reminds me of the 100 acre wood from Winnie the Pooh. I think this area is perfect. We're in a little valley, so it's not too windy. There's lots of dead wood around to make a fire. There's a stream right nearby. And these two trees, I think, are the perfect distance to set up my hammock and a tarp tent. Now, our first priority is shelter. In a short-term survival situation, the number one danger is exposure. That means being too hot, hyperthermia, or being too cold, hypothermia. Now here, where it can rain at any moment and it dips to below 40 degrees Fahrenheit at night, Hypothermia is our main danger. So it's 1 p.m. There are some clouds coming, so we gotta get our shelter set up. Let's do it. Well, the trees for that first spot I chose were too far apart to set up my hammock, but I think we got an even better one. Check this out. Ooh. Oh, that is cozy. We gotta get a proper shelter set up over this hammock. And for that, we're gonna use the tarp. Now, the perceptive among you may have noticed that I did not bring any rope, but I do have a plethora of 3D printing filament, including this stuff, TPU. This is used to print flexible rubber-like materials and the filament itself is also very flexible, much more than PLA or PETG. Now, before you call me a cheater, I have tried to 3D print rope in the past. It kind of worked, but it wasn't very strong. And my hypothesis is that by laying down thin extrusions and then braiding them together into a rope, you end up with a cord that is actually weaker than filament on its own. I think because you're introducing air into the extrusion, you're basically taking a nice, perfect industrial material and making it less than perfect. So I really don't wanna mess around with shelter. If I get wet here and can't warm up, I actually might have to cut this short. So I think this will be good cordage. This should be an interesting challenge.
It's not pretty, but we got ourselves a shelter. The TPU is super slippery and flexible, so tying it in knots was very challenging. I think that'll work. We don't have a crazy amount of headroom. The guy wire sagged a lot. I doubled it up and I added more ties to get the top around the tree, but I think that's as much headroom as we're gonna get. But you know, having it nice and cozy like this will probably help keep warmth in overnight. So I think I'll stay nice and dry. But the other consideration is keeping all of the electronic equipment out of the rain. And I think there's enough surface area under there to do that. It's now 3 p.m. It's already starting to get cooler as the sun is starting to go behind the mountains. So I would love to end today with a fire and some water. Obviously I'm surrounded by these creeks, but I'm not drinking any of this water without boiling it first. I do not want to risk waterborne illness. So I'm gonna move all the electronics under the tarp, build myself a fire ring, and start collecting firewood. I used this piece of wood to stabilize it in the wheelbarrow, and I'm gonna prop it on top of that because, I wonder if I can hold it up. This thing actually has belts under it, and so it needs to be on a nice flat surface so that it actually works. And you know, this will keep it out of the muck as well in case it does rain. It's gonna be cozy. All right, that works. <laughs> so first things first, I'm making a fire ring. We are in California, and even though it's March, there is always the risk of wildfires. We're well outside of wildfire season. Fires are allowed in this park right now, as long as you're responsible and have a permit, which I do. But we're gonna do things by the book. This state has uh, seen a lot in the way of natural disasters recently, and I do not wanna add to that. I'm doing my best to leave no trace, Leave it better than I found it. That's a nice ring, and I did it while talking. <laughs> oh, look at that, the sun's coming out. Last hurrah for the end of the day. One of the nice things about this area is that there are all of these downed trees. This one looks like it came down in a fire. There's some charred bits up there. We have all of this nice firewood above the ground that hopefully is not too rotted out. There's also this nice little reeds. It's got that nice fluffy inside. Hopefully that'll be great tinder. The main reason I need fire is so that I can boil water to safely drink. Now my pot has this handy little handle, so I need a way to suspend it above the fire. I found these two sticks that have a nice fork on the top, and I carved the ends into stakes. I'm just gonna make a little pre-drill hole. Now I can lie a stick across the top. So I can take this fork stick, hang it here, and now we just need a little notch on the other side. There we go, it's not perfect, but just barely holds the pot. Woohoo! I think we're gonna have a drink of water today. Alright, metal match. Magnesium alloy on one side, also known as mish metal, and flint on the other. This magnesium has a low ignition point and a high burn temperature. We're scraping off shavings into a pile so that when we strike a spark with the other side, this will create a little flame. Now why bring one of these instead of a match? Because matches can get wet. Why bring one of these instead of a lighter? Because lighters can get wet. If this gets wet, it still works. So I have some tinder at the ready because once this goes, it does not go for long. Here we go, attempt number one. Let's see if we can do it first try. There it is. Wow, 
<laughs> I guess I gotta move a lot faster. Three, two, one. There it goes. Boom. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's not smother it. Gotta keep, keep it aerated. Move the camera away. Don't wanna light the camera on fire. Oh boy. Oh, I might lose it. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Now we're surviving. I'm so happy. All right, let's get our water set up over top. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, this might be a good time to tell you about why I'm doing this. I mean, it's a pretty crazy proposition. Survive in the wilderness for a week with a 3D printer. And I know, I know, I haven't used a 3D printer much yet, but trust me, I got some ideas. When I was a kid, I loved survival stuff. I was super into Les Stroud's Survivor Man. I went to summer camp every year. I would go in the woods and try to make fires. I just loved survival stories. But I've never done it. And with my more recent passions of making and 3D printing, when I got this idea, it seemed like not just a really fun video concept, but also a way to do this thing that I've always wanted to, which is actually go into this woods by myself, no food, no water, and survive. You know, do bushcraft, build fires, hang a pot over a fire, make a makeshift shelter, but also, you know, let's do something crazy and see if uh, <laughs> we can 3D print survival tools. It's pretty wild, like I've never, the longest I've gone without eating is one day for Yom Kippur as a child. But I haven't done that in years. I don't think I've had a day without caffeine since I started drinking it. I don't think I've ever been by myself for a week. So I'm, you know, I'm hopeful. I think at its best, this will be a really beautiful experience. And you know, I'll be able to have some introspection, some time away from technology. That's the thing too. I used to go to summer camp every year and be away from technology for two weeks. But you know, ever since I turned 16, it's been 10 years. I haven't done that since then. This feels just like the perfect thing to do right now. And especially since we're living out of the van and we're able to go to all these different places, it's like the best time to do it. You know, a week without eating, that's no joke. There's the rule of threes. Humans can survive three minutes without air, three hours in inclement weather. That's why the shelter was so important. Three days without water, and technically 30 days without food. I'm sure many of you watching this video have never gone longer than a day without eating, and I feel very lucky that I never had to do that. So I just have no idea what kind of pain or longing or just suffering I'm in for. And that I think is one of the things I'm most afraid of is just that, that physical discomfort. But um, I don't know. It might look pretty barren out here, but I got a couple ideas. To kill the pathogens that would make you sick, we want a rolling boil for about two minutes. I'll probably just do three minutes to be safe. All right, it's officially been over three minutes, so I'll take that. I put the pot in the stream so the water would cool faster. I was expecting to drink this like soup, but it cooled it so fast that <laughs> it's now pretty cool. But I'm gonna drink this. I'm gonna drink this whole pot of water, slowly. Don't worry, I'm not gonna get sick. And pretend that it is soup. The most delicious soup in the world. Ah, ah that's good. There's tomato. Ah, there's turkey, there's corn. Bits of potato in there. And I'll tell you what, I've been hearing frogs, and it might not be tonight, but I'm gonna catch one. 
We're gonna eat this week, baby. I hear one right now, actually. Welcome to day two. Last night was actually pretty cozy. I slept the first half of the night very comfortably, but it did get pretty chilly in the early morning. So a little before dawn, I came out, made a little fire, warmed my feet, drank some water, and it looks like it's gonna be another beautiful day. I feel so grateful for this weather, and I really hope it holds off, but I'm not expecting it's going to. So. We gotta prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yesterday was wild. I can't believe how much we got done. And as I was lying in my hammock last night, I thought of at least a few 3D printed improvements to make this survival situation better. But for now, I'm gonna drink my water, enjoy this fire, and then we're gonna get to work. Also, hunger, hunger is not bad. I mean, I could go for breakfast right now, but there's no pain in my stomach. I feel relatively normal. Yeah, day without food, easy. <laughs> All right, I got the printer set up. Let's design our first 3D printed survival tools. The first two tools I'm gonna make are gonna help with one of the most vital needs in a survival situation, water. Now, I was able to boil water last night, but it was a bit of a pain. Turning that fork stick into an S-hook was super finicky. It was barely holding the pot over the fire, and I don't know how much it's gonna hold up over the course of a week. And honestly, my bushcraft skills aren't that great. So I thought I'd design a 3D printed replacement. So I'm in Fusion 360, and I'm just gonna create a rectangle the size of my build plate, 256 millimeters, so I can make the biggest S-hook possible. So we want this to be pretty beefy, let's say a half inch. And yes, I am 3D modeling in inches. Let's see, if we have a hook with a diameter of about two inches, that should be plenty. Let's make that 0.5 inches thick. I'm just gonna add some fillets to strengthen some of these corners. So one thing I'm curious about is if I 3D design on like day five and I don't have any food by day five, how much is my cognitive function going to decline? All right, honestly, that seems perfectly functional to me. I think we can leave that there and design our second water tool, a cup. Now it might sound like we're really living large now. You know, I can drink straight out of the pot, but that also means that I can't use the pot for anything else while it's full of drinking water. I wanna print both of these at the same time to minimize the amount of time that the 3D printer is running so I can save power. Okay, on second thought, the cup with you know no handle, no lid, is gonna take three hours and 16 minutes to print. I mean, I can cut down on that a bit if I you know change to draft mode. I don't think, it, it's still two hours and 59 minutes. If it's a cloudy day today, I'm worried that we're not gonna be able to generate enough solar energy to reclaim that power. So to start, I think I'm just going to print the S hook and we'll put off the cup until later. Perfect, 54 minute print time. First 3D print, let's do it. All right, we are officially 3D printing in the middle of the woods. This is so crazy. And the reason it's even possible is because of the sponsor for this video, the Anchor Solix C1000 Portable Power Station. I'm using this to run my 3D printer, power my laptop, and charge all of my camera equipment. It has 1,056 watt hours of capacity, and I'm recharging it in the field with a 200 watt folding solar panel from Anchor. This thing has 11 ports, so it's super easy to charge everything at the same time. It can power 99% of appliances with 1800 watt output, as well as 2400 watt surge output. The lithium batteries have a 10 year lifespan and the Anchor Solix C1000 comes in at 15% smaller than the industry average, which I really appreciated having to cart it into this spot in the forest. 
Now, if you're using the C1000 in a bit more of a conventional setup, it also works as an uninterruptible power supply. Say you're 3D printing something and you're worried you might lose power in a blizzard. Well, you can plug your 3D printer into the C1000, plug the C1000 into the wall, if all is normal, it will just work as a surge protector, but if you lose power, it will continue running power to your 3D printer so that your print can finish no problem. Now, I only have 200 watts of solar hooked up because it's all I could haul into the field, but you can hook up 600 watts of solar panel to the C1000. And if you do so, it can charge from zero to 100% in just 1.8 hours, which is 40% faster than other power stations with the same capacity. Now, if you just plug it into a wall socket, it'll charge from zero to 100 in just 58 minutes. We also use the C1000 when we're back of the van. A lot of times we'll have our Starlink internet hooked up to it. And sometimes when you're laying in bed, you realize it's still on, but you don't wanna drain the battery overnight. Well, not to fear. The C1000 also comes with smart app control. So you can switch it on and off wirelessly. But out here camping in the woods, this thing is a beast. It is super durable. It has a unibody drop proof design. And you can double the capacity by hooking up a second C1000 to get a total output of 2,112 watt hours. Right now you can get the C1000 for just $649. So click the link in the description to claim that deal. Thank you to Anchor Solix for sponsoring this video. And I think the print just finished. Perfect timing because I just finished that pot of water that I boiled yesterday. Got my fire built back up. All right. Now I know you might be worried that this is gonna melt, but when I took the handle out of the fire yesterday, it didn't even feel hot to the touch. And up here, there's no heat. All the heat's under the pot. So as long as I keep my fire relatively contained, I think this should work really well. When I checked the weather forecast before I left, it looks like rain was forecasted for tomorrow, so <sighs> not looking forward to that, but trying to take advantage of the sunlight while it's here. Just waiting for my water to boil, breaking sticks. I'm trying to get as prepared as I can for the rain tomorrow. Process and sort and store dry firewood under the tent. It's officially afternoon of day two. It's 12.20 p.m. and the hunger is really starting to get to me. I've had a bit of a very light throbbing headache for a lot of the day. I'm gonna chalk that up to caffeine withdrawal. I kind of expected this would be a pretty tough part, just getting over that initial hunger pang. I feel very aware of being lower energy, although that might just be in my head because I'm just thinking a lot about food and wanting to catch frogs. <laughs> but they're clearly much more active at dusk. So I'm gonna try to hunker down for the afternoon, collect a little firewood. I have to keep moving the solar panel so it stays in the sun since we're in this lovely grove, but those trees do cast shadows. So yeah, I'm gonna try to do sort of like low impact tasks and uh, get ready for dusk when I think it'll be hunting time. <laughs> The sun is setting on day two and it's been an interesting afternoon. I spent a while collecting firewood, processing it, organizing it, stockpiling it under the tent for the inevitable rain. I also got the 3D printer propped up on some rocks so if there is water on the ground, it doesn't get onto the printer. I got the wheelbarrow under there as well so I feel prepared for when it does finally rain. The last five hours have definitely been an adjustment period. I've had a lot of time just to sit and think and plan my next move. Survival is this funny balance between staying productive and keeping your mind active and conserving energy. And I feel like I'm slowly settling into the rhythm. But I've been conserving my energy for a reason because I think in about an hour, the frogs are gonna start chirping. I could really use a meal to end this day. 
All right, before it gets too dark, I wanna get a fire started just in case we do catch a frog. What am I saying, just in case? We're gonna catch one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And now we wait. Well, the frogs have started chirping and there's still a bit of light in the sky, so I think now is the ideal time to go hunting. I heard some chirping in this direction behind my tent. Now in the past when I've approached them, they've stopped chirping the moment I get close. So I'm just gonna try to camp out here and see if I can surprise them. Where are you frogs? I got nothing but time. One just made a noise right over there. I'm just gonna sit here and wait. It's so hard to follow the calls because it seems like the moment you get close, they just stop. And the sound carries in this really weird way. Like I've caught frogs before. Why is this so hard? Yes! No! Oh no! <sighs> All right, that's the closest I've gotten. And now I know they're brown, or at least some of them are. Well, it's not much, <laughs> but it's something. And on day two, I'll take a little something any day of the week. The tiniest frog legs, <laughs> oh my gosh, in the whole world. This is almost like ridiculous. I'll spare you the gory details, but that is one leg. <laughs> I should have just taken that frog I found earlier today. Check it out. Don't worry, oh, maybe this one's a baby. Maybe they're all this small, but I'm grateful for it. We caught one. It's like almost not worth it. There's so little meat. I don't know, maybe frog legs aren't the way to go. Hopefully this one was just a baby. I'm gonna try again tomorrow. You know what, the frogs are still going crazy. I, I gotta try again. Yes. Now those are some better looking legs. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's not much, but it's meat and I can actually chew it this time. Mmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. That's really good. I've had frog's legs before. It really does taste like chicken. Mmm. Yes. Ah, oh, that is a huge morale booster. They're still going crazy. I kind of want to go in to try to find another one while we still have uh, this fire going. Oh, by the way, the Anchor Solux has a light on it, which is really helpful <laughs> for filming at night, as well as skinning frogs at night. Mmm. Oh, there we go. Good morning and welcome to my cozy little bedroom. I actually slept really well last night. I think zipping my jacket around my feet helped a lot because I kept my feet nice and warm all night. Oh, catching that big frog last night was such a huge morale boost. It rained a tiny bit last night. It looks like everything stayed nice and dry. So it's not raining right now. So I think I'm gonna get up, make a fire and 
honestly just try to catch more frogs. <laughs> Got my dry firewood and another full pot of water that I boiled last night. It's not coffee, but it'll do. I've been trying to stay super hydrated. Even if you're not getting much food, being as hydrated as possible really helps your physical and cognitive performance. So uh, sorry for the possibly gross details, but I'm basically drinking water until my pee is clear. This metal match has been so fantastic. It doesn't even take that long to start with it. I know this is gonna sound very YouTube-y, but I'm gonna put links to all of the survival tools I brought in the description, including this metal match. Three, two, one. Yep, there we go. Come on. Yes, there we go. Come on, first try fire, baby. Oh, having this like pre-processed wood is key. It was so worth all that time yesterday collecting this and sorting it and getting it into manageable size pieces. And then once, once I have something relatively sustainable, I'll start putting the wet pieces on top to dry them out. This little marshy area near the campsite is where I caught all of them yesterday. So the ones that I saw seem to be hanging out in these grassy areas along the edge of the creek. They were so loud last night and waiting for them to call was helpful in that I could hear one and then move towards it. They would always stop when I got really close, but it gave me like an idea of where they were. Now, I don't know if they're, if they sleep during the day, if they go and hide somewhere, but you know, it's worth a shot. I mean, just walking around and looking it's not like it expends many calories and I'm, I'm just dreaming of more frog. <laughs> as gross as that sounds. Actually, I'm not even gonna qualify that. If you've never had frog legs, go get them. They're actually really good. They're like a French delicacy. Um, they honestly do just taste like chicken and a lot better than chicken when you haven't eaten in three days. I'm hunkered down in the tent because it is officially raining. I'm staying busy though. I am determined to 3D print myself a cup. It's actually kind of nice to be under here 3D modeling. So much better than just twiddling my thumbs. I got the uh, solar panel set up over there facing the morning sun. And I think even though it's raining, yeah, we're still generating eight watts of power. So staying productive even in the bad weather keeping the mind active. I feel like that's one of the biggest things for these survival situations. You know, I was really dreading this yesterday, being stuck in the tent when it's raining outside, but honestly, it's, it's really nice. It's extremely peaceful. It's not pouring. I'm confident that all my stuff is dry because I took care of that last night. And I'm just conserving my energy for the hunt tonight. <laughs> a big part of me was really looking forward to this experience as sort of like a retreat, you know, of getting close to nature and being by myself for a week and just away from technology, seeing what that's like. And I, I feel like I'm, I am getting that experience. I'm really happy with the cup design, but it's still gonna take about four hours to print. And based on my experience of 3D printing with batteries, I think with zero solar, the C1000 can sustain about a three hour print. So luckily the rain has kind of held off. We had some sprinklings, um, but it's still quite overcast. So I think we're only getting about 10 watts of input from the 200 watt panel. So I'm just wandering along the creek, looking for frogs, taking it all in. Now on the topic of food, there are coastal oak trees all over here. That's like the main species of tree. And they have acorns, which you can eat with a bit of preparation. But unfortunately, it's early March in California, 
Uh, we're kind of at the worst time of the year for harvesting acorns. There's a few rotten ones on the ground, there's a couple shells in the trees, but that's it. I haven't seen any other nut trees. I don't really want to delve into the world of wild edible greens because they don't provide many calories and the risk, in my opinion, sort of outweighs the reward. If I accidentally eat something poisonous, you know, it's going to be a bad time. <laughs> so I'm trying to focus on high energy, low effort foods like the frogs. Now there's also a large river over there that looks like it has fish in it. I have no idea. To catch one, I think would be a fair amount of work. So I might explore that on day, day four or five. But for now, you know, if I can just grab a frog with my hand, that's kind of ideal. There's also mushrooms, but again, not messing with that. Oh, there's also ground squirrels everywhere. The meadow is full of their holes, but again, that is high effort to catch one of them. I don't even know how I would go about it. So I don't know if I'm getting really desperate later on in the week, maybe I'll try for a squirrel. Well, the sun did come out, which is very nice. It's interesting, the physical sensation of hunger has not changed much, but I am noticing I'm getting a little lightheaded when I stand up after kneeling. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm getting out of breath a little faster. But the main thing is I'm just thinking about food a lot more. <laughs> but that's the plan for tonight, baby. I wanna have a feast tonight. Let me tell you about my grand plan for the evening. I want to catch enough frogs to make a frog soup. That will allow me to use the whole body and the broth will contain all of the calories. So I'll get the maximum energy possible. It's a bit of a reach, but I'm feeling optimistic. So optimistic, in fact, that I sat down in the meadow with my laptop this afternoon, designed a spoon and 3D printed it. Don't worry, I'm packing out all the little pieces of support material and plastic waste with me. Leave no trace. Look at that, ready to eat like a king. Now I know there's a lot of concern on the internet about 3D prints not being food safe because of the gaps in between the layers, which is true, it's a place for bacteria to grow, but this is a survival situation. The alternative to my 3D printed spoon is a piece of wood or my hands. I'm not sure if that's much better, so I'll take my chances. And I feel like this goes without saying, do not try this at home. Yes. Yes. No. Oh, it was a big one too. Yes, oh yes. I've officially learned the way of the frogs. I caught like seven little ones. I almost had one big one, but then it escaped my grasp, which really bummed me out. But in the end, the last frog I caught was a nice big one. So they're all in the pot to boil now. I had a fantasy of like skinning each of them and taking out the guts and then putting them in, but <laughs> trying to keep them all in the pot when I open it and then throw one in, uh, just, you know, is super difficult. So I'm gonna need to figure out a better strategy for tomorrow so that I can ideally catch more and, you know, gut them. But for now, soup's on, baby! Woo! All right, here we go, first sip of broth. Ah, oh, it tastes like very, very weak broth but there's protein in there. Definitely not as tasty as uh, roasted frog legs over the fire. To be honest, that was pretty challenging to eat, but I got there in the end. I'll spare you the gory details, but I'll just say boiling it longer helped and having a bit of broth with each bite. Shout out to the 3D printed spoon, that was necessary. Feels good knowing I have some energy in my belly. Wow, big day. See you in the morning.
Good morning. After a cold and damp night, it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. It's a perfect blue sky. I do not see a single cloud and I feel full of energy. I fixed up my shelter, took out my sleeping bag to air it out, and I brought the solar panel in C1000 out from under the trees and over to the meadow, actually on this south facing slope. So it should have good sun exposure all day, which is a good thing because 3D printing on a cloudy day did a bit of a number on the C1000, probably combined with the cold. I think it dipped down to 47%, but I mean, it looks like it's gonna be sunny all day. So I'm feeling great. It's wild what one good meal will do. I, I don't feel hungry right now, which is crazy. Um, you know, I, I could eat, I'm kind of dreaming about s'mores, but the nagging thoughts of food are not quite as loud as they were yesterday. It's gonna be a great day. I can feel it. I really want to maximize the sunlight today. So I loaded the 3D printer up in the wheelbarrow, brought it over here to the hillside meadow, and finally started printing my mug so I don't have to keep drinking water directly out of the pot. That print's gonna take about four and a half hours. It's currently noon, but the solar panels are in a really good spot. So I think we should have sufficient power all day. It's only 8 a.m. and we're already getting 120 watts, which is awesome. And while that's printing, I thought of another survival tool that I want to design. To successfully catch frogs at night, I need some sort of light source, but a flashlight was not one of my 10 survival items. So I've been using my iPhone light, it's also what I've been using to film actually catching the frogs, but it's super difficult because I need to catch the frogs with one hand and I'm holding the light with the other, and then I have a frog in one hand and to actually like put it down somewhere, I can only do it one-handed because I'm lighting the way the entire way. So I need some sort of hands-free lighting situation. I mean, a headlamp would be ideal, but I don't really want to strap this to my head. And I was looking around, like trying to figure out how I can make this happen with a 3D printer. And then I realized something. At night, it gets pretty cold, so I'm wearing this jacket. And when I zip it up, that looks like something I could hang a light from. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and designed a, basically a hanger that can go onto this zipper and hook around the pop socket, that's this guy right here, on my phone. I printed it out of TPU, that flexible filament that I use to string up my shelter. Here we are, let's see if this thing works. So I made this sort of slot on one end and a loop on the other. I can put the slot through the zipper pull. And then the idea for the loop to go through the slot, it hangs just like that. I have my light, I can deploy the pop socket, slip this around. Uh, well, <laughs> unforeseen consequence, it pulls the zipper down and uh, doesn't really hang very well. Yeah, that is, I don't think that's really gonna work. I'd love to design a V2, but the sun's starting to go down. So this might be a project for tomorrow. Guess we're going, uh, one-handed hunting again tonight. <laughs> ah, that feels good. Even got a lid to keep the wood ash out. Again, not the most food safe thing. Don't try this at home. First try. Oh, perfect. I fallen into a nice rhythm of one fire per day at the end of the day to warm up after the sun goes down, boil my water for the next day, and cook dinner. Last night, obviously, I had to use the pot to make the soup, so I boiled my water for today after that, which was kind of annoying. I had to, you know, stay up. But tonight, I'm boiling my water before catching dinner because I'm not planning on making frog soup tonight. I 
actually caught three, but let's just say a frog with no head can still hop. <laughs> Honestly, I'm feeling a little discouraged. It seems like there's less frogs in the little creek that's right next to my camp. Maybe they've gotten smarter. Maybe they've, you know, moved away. Um, so I hope to get more, but I'm gonna cook up the two that I got. And this time I'm going to roast them again. Um, while the soup was very nutritious, it was kind of gross. <laughs> and I think just roasting and trying to get them crispy will make them, you know, just a lot better. All right, I roasted this a good while. So hopefully it's crispy. I think this is gonna be better than last night. Three, two, one. Yeah. That is definitely better. Not gross at all. Like the taste, not you don't you don't look at it, you just eat it. <laughs> the taste is good. I'm gonna roast up the second one and then go try to catch more. Three, two, one. Oh, it's hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like popcorn shrimp. I'm feeling motivated to go get some more. Yes. So much better roasted than boiled. I know last night I was all like, I'm king of the frogs. And I feel like that was such a cringy thing to say. I'm honestly so grateful for them. Like being my sole food source and being abundant right around my camp. I think I got kind of cocky yesterday probably because it rained all day. That's why there were so many. Uh, there's definitely just less today. And um, I think like I've scared some of them off. So I'm gonna keep looking for like, it's 7.30 right now. Maybe I'll go for like 15, 20 more minutes. But if not, three little frogs, that's a good dinner. Better than nothing, I'll tell you that. Just having a little bit of food is, is huge. Got him. I ended up catching two more for a total of five little frogs. So much better than boiling them. I'm so happy I uh, decided to go the roasted route tonight. It was honestly such a good day today. Like being able to spend pretty much all day in the meadow, 3D modeling. The 3D printed cup is honestly so nice. Like being able to drink out of a mug instead of the pot just feels fantastic. I'm just feeling very grateful today that everything's working very well. I have all my needs. I really feel like I'm getting a lot out of this experience, um, you know, being away from technology and the internet. By the way, earlier when I said I have my phone, which I'm filming this on, I don't have internet service. The phone is just a video production equipment. Anyways, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of getting everything I need. I'm excited to eat a real meal after this. And I'm trying not to think too much about food, but you know, in this moment, I feel satiated. I feel satisfied. So tomorrow's day five. We are officially over halfway there. Let's finish strong. A little chilly this morning. I think the lack of food is starting to kind of get to me. When you eat, your metabolism generates body heat. And when you don't eat as much, you get colder. So I'm just trying to walk around this morning as the sun rises, warm up a little bit, because it's not really worth it to kneel in the mud and make a fire. <sighs> That's so nice. It's another beautiful sunny morning, but I'm feeling kind of low energy, slow and lazy this morning. I think the lack of food is finally starting to get to me. Man, I really wished I was well versed in foraging. There are mushrooms everywhere. It's something I'd like to learn more about. I just uh, did not become an expert before this trip. But hopefully today's 3D printed survival tool will help with that. The frogs are great, but it's not a lot of food and it takes a fair amount of time and energy to catch them. I would love an easier way of getting food, something that I could just set and forget. So I had the idea of making a fish trap. There is that big river right near my campsite that I haven't taken advantage of yet. I haven't seen fish in there, but it looks like the sort of river where there would be trout, 
So I designed a 3D printed fish trap in the style of those indigenous basket traps. But when I first exported it to the slicer, both pieces would take about 15 hours to print, which is not doable. I need this print to happen during the daytime so I can pack everything under the tent at night and so I can take advantage of the solar energy. But then I had the idea of printing it in spiral vase mode. For those of you who don't know, that's when a print is just one perimeter, the extruder going around and around printing a constant spiral. And that cut the print time down drastically, so much so that I could actually increase the size of the fish trap, taking up the entire build volume. Hopefully it will allow me to catch some bigger fish. And yeah, I'm stoked. If we get, if this works, it's funny, I brought the 3D printer here so I could print survival tools, but it's had this interesting secondary benefit of keeping my mind occupied, which is super valuable on days like today where I could easily just lie in my hammock, dream about getting rescued and the first meal I'm gonna have. But to have a project, to have something that I can sit down and design and be creative and make the time go by faster, it's, uh, it's really important in a survival situation. But even with the 3D printing, ah, yeah, there's still a lot of daylight hours to fill, a lot of time to spend not thinking about food. And honestly, one of my favorite ways to spend that time is just chopping wood. It's so satisfying. It makes the time fly by. Yeah, it expends some energy, but I'm really just sitting here swinging my arm. And at the end of it, you know that you'll have some nice, logs for the fire when it's cold and dark. Aw, oh, yeah. Look at that baby. That'll burn for a while. While the fish trap prints, I'm getting my fire started a little early today because I have a surprise in this pot. This morning, I was sitting under an oak tree and I look on the ground and see what looks to be a perfect acorn. Now, this is really surprising because it's winter here. We are months past the acorn harvest and I look around the ground and sure enough, I find another one. Up to this point, every acorn I've seen on the ground has either been rotten and squishy or just a shell. But these are the first two I've seen that actually seemed hard. So I looked around a bit more. I actually found two more, brought them back, cracked them open. Two of them looked good. I mean, they're probably a little past their prime, but definitely edible. Now I know I said earlier, I'm a little hesitant about plant foraging, but acorns are something I am a little confident in. I did some reading before this trip and learned that acorns are edible to humans. They do taste pretty bitter. And to mediate that, you soak them in water for a few hours, which I've been doing, and then boil them, ideally twice with a change of water. While I was walking around throughout my day, I kept my eyes on the ground. I did find one more. So we have three acorns in here. It might not sound like a lot, but these things look meaty and I am really excited for some different food. We're gonna have an appetizer today. Oh boy, here we go. I boiled these for 10 minutes, changed the water, and then boiled them for another 10 minutes. Get all of them into my spoon. Oh man, I'm excited. Look at that. That might not look like much, but when you haven't eaten barely anything in five days, that's a good bite. I'm just gonna go all of them at once to try to maximize the satisfaction. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Mmm. Hmm. They're a little bitter. I probably should have boiled them longer, but that's fat, that's carbohydrates, that's protein. And I have my water mug here to wash it down. It kind of tastes like a, like a raw pecan, like if you, or like a raw cashew or something. Uh, a nut that needs to be, I, you know what would have been really good if I roasted it after I boiled it, like dry roasted in the pan, but I'm satisfied with that. Woo! Thriving. All right.
Alright, back to the fish trap. I printed the pieces in transparent PETG so that I could see if a fish swam in while it's still underwater. Since it is textured, it's not completely transparent, but it's better than opaque. You can at least see through it a little. The top piece printed perfectly, but I made a mistake on the bottom piece. I don't know why I didn't think of this, probably because I haven't eaten much in five days, but I made the dome at the top way too shallow. So the nozzle was basically printing in midair and the top of the print failed, so a fish could just swim right out the back. Now I don't have any tape with me, but I realized that since spiral vase mode prints so fast, I could just quickly modify my design, change the top to more of a peak instead of a dome, and reprint it. And right as the sun dipped below the mountains, the print finished. This is basically how it works. You have a funnel that the fish swims into, and then the fish gets caught in this part. Now I'd love to set this tonight and catch some breakfast, but it's starting to get dark and I really don't want to risk getting cold and wet at night. So I'm just going to wait to set it in the morning. But on the bright side, by that point I'll have some bait. So I caught a little frog pretty fast. And then after like 20 more minutes, I finally stumbled across another big one. It got away from me like twice, but in the end I got it. And look at those. Those are some real frog legs. No whole body, just meat. Oh, I missed this. Back to day two days. And the rest of the body uh, is perfect to bait the fish trap. That's as much meat as a chicken wing. Mm. Honestly, man, I'm satisfied. I think getting the acorns earlier in the day kind of took the stress and the immediacy out of the frog hunting. Just having that little bit of extra food, yeah, allowed me to like chill a little more by the side of the creek because they've definitely moved away. <laughs> There's like no more chirping on the little creek bed right next to my camp. I have to walk down like 10 or 20 feet in some of the more rocky areas, but it's fun. You just get to stand there, look at the stars, listen to them chirp again and slowly approach them because they stop chirping when you get close. So you gotta kind of got to sneak up on them and they stop when you shine a light. Mm. Wow. I am so grateful. Thank you frogs for your sustenance. Mm. I feel like each morning is a little harder than the last. It's just really hard to get started on things. I feel low energy. It's really easy to just stand around, not really doing anything. In a way, it makes it really great to have these projects to work on. Even just bringing the solar panels out to the meadow to get set up, carting the 3D printer out here. Those little tasks are a reason to, you know, get up and move and get some inertia going. Because once I start moving around, I feel good. It's just like the getting going. By the way, after I recorded that last clip last night, I caught a second big frog, which was so amazing. Honestly, I'm getting a little tired of frog legs. So let's see if we can catch something else. So I have my trap here, full of bait. I think this is gonna be a really good place to set the trap because it's a pool after a series of rapids. Trout especially like highly oxygenated water. I also think there is poison oak all over here, so I'm being very careful to not touch any of that. Take off my three pairs of socks. Ooh, that's chilly. I'm glad I didn't do this last night. So the idea is you face the funnel upstream so that fish naturally swim into it. They also smell the bait. And you kind of want to put it in a place where they might naturally go. So there's a nice little like rock undercropping here. I can try to wedge it in there. Oh nice, it sinks. I was a little worried it would float. And I'm gonna pile rocks around it to keep it in place and kind of disguise it. It's also a good way to sort of build a funnel. 
There's my set trap. I'll leave that for today and come check on it this evening. While I'm waiting on the fish trap, I thought of another way to get food. I was playing with my failed phone holder and I noticed it was really stretchy, which gave me an idea. I wonder if I can 3D print a TPU slingshot elastic. So I found a forked stick, carved it into a slingshot handle, collected a bunch of pebbles from the creek, and designed a slingshot elastic. I tried to make it take up as much of the build plate as possible so I can make it nice and long. All right, so here's my beautiful carved slingshot handle and V1 of the 3D printed elastic. There we go, into my carved notch. All right, that looks like a slingshot to me. Load in one of my pebbles. Ooh, it is extremely stiff. I might have to decrease the width of the kind of elastic strap parts, but let's just see, see if it works. <laughs> I'm also weak from six days of very little food. Come on, here we go. Oh, it actually kind of launched. I think if we just decrease the width of the straps, we'll just try to split it in half. That should work pretty well. All right, version two. As you can see, I made the band half as wide, so it should, let's see. Oh yeah, that stretch is easier. In three, two, one. Ooh, that actually works. Ooh. Nice. There we go. Oh no. Well, the uh, string broke after like 20 shots. Not the worst thing in the world though, because honestly, I don't really want to kill a bird or a squirrel. Fun proof of concept though. <sighs> I am so hungry. <sighs> it's like this time of day. It's almost noon where it hits the hardest. Man, I thought day six would be easy, you know, home stretch, but it's turning out to be one of the hardest days. I feel so unmotivated and like, I can do these things. I can move the 3D printer and set the fish trap, but to gear up the motivation to do it is so hard. All I wanna do is just like sit under a tree or lie down, which honestly is probably the best thing to do to conserve energy. Yeah, man, this lack of food is no joke. It's now 4.30. The trap has been in there for almost eight hours now. Let's see if we got anything. Oh, please. Nothing. Guess it's frogs again tonight. So I ended up catching one little frog tonight. <laughs> Man, today is really not my day food-wise. It happens, it's all good. You can probably still hear, they're still chirping, but it's cold, I got a nice warm fire. I think I can be a little hungry for one more night. I am so excited to get rescued tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to day seven. I think it's time to get rescued. During this week, my wife Eden has been camped in another part of the forest and to make sure I'm safe, we've been doing daily check-ins via radio and I'm about to make my last radio call. Pumpkin to avocado? Yes, those are our code names. Avocado here. I'm heading out. I'll be out. Goodbye, Meadow. Goodbye, campsite. Oh, 
I think I see my rescue party. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so <smelling> like food. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Do I? Do I smell like frogs? No. But we got bubbly water. Oh. Tortilla chips. Wow. Scrambled eggs. Ooh. Hash browns, soup to hash browns. Oh. We got maple syrup, which means pancakes. Pancakes. Oh my gosh. Veggie stew and trail mix as requested. Oh, you are a great wife. I am a great wife. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. This is probably obvious, but I've literally never appreciated food more in my entire life than I have right now. Like the amount that I just spent thinking about food and like thinking about how great food is during that week, it was a lot. I, I just thought about all the times I've taken food for granted, honestly. <laughs> yeah, which is really easy to do when you're not like growing it or raising it. How is it to have bubbly water again? Not as good as the food, honestly. I had <laughs> plenty of water while I was there. I was like almost sick of water. <laughs> We filmed the body comparison before I left on day one and after I got back on day seven. And it's pretty crazy how different those two shots look. I didn't think you'd be able to tell much of a difference, but you can really see how much weight I lost on my sides and on my arms. It makes sense. I mean, 20 little frogs can only provide so many calories. I think most of my energy needs were coming from muscle and fat stores. This project was so incredibly fulfilling and it brought up so many feelings of gratitude for food, for Eden, for being able to be in that beautiful place for a week. And for you, for watching these videos and allowing me to do incredible experiences like this. If you watch this video all the way to the end, thank you so much. Watching these videos all the way through really, really helps. And I wanna know if you watched it to the end. So if you made it to here, please comment acorns in honor of the food that I wish I had a lot more of during that week. <laughs> and I would also love to hear in the comments what other ideas you have for 3D printed survival tools. If you were in the middle of the woods with a 3D printer, what would you create to aid your survival? If you'd like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to my private Instagram page and Discord community by supporting this channel on Patreon. I'd like to give a special thank you to my top supporters on Patreon, Paige Arlt and my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you.